I'm in the process of making a heat shield for this ECU box. And I'm playing around with super imprecise cardboard template. Uh, it looks kind of janky right now, but I think I might be able to make this work. So dimensionally, this is about what the heat shield should look like. It'll basically cover this whole entire side and then turn around the back corner over here. Now, I think this is okay enough to basically start transferring the cardboard template onto my heat shield material itself. And this right here is a heat shield material that I'm using. It's actually from the Vibrant catalog, even though it's made in Australia. I think Vibrant just basically rebrands it, but it's basically like a four ply sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer that cardboard template on top and start cutting this up. That took way longer than I thought. Here's a scene from all the work. Let's check it out. So this is what I came up with. I'm pretty happy with it. It hugs the ECU box really closely and I was able to kind of radius this turn pretty well. So the construction of this heat shield came out to be a little bit more complicated than I thought. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this from the car and then uh, show you the heat shield by itself. This is the inside or the back side. And then here's the front. You can see how I had to make this cutout over here to give the corner of the ECU box some more clearance and also give the harness a channel to sit in. So the reason why I think I went a little bit complicated with the shield's makeup is because I added a few extra pieces, like this uh, inside piece over there. And then I also added a bunch of rivets here and there to give it some more strength. But it's a pretty solid piece, so hopefully it fits well once everything's put together. And this heat shield material itself is really easy to work with. I like how malleable it was to kind of, you know, bend into place and make all the cuts. So that definitely made the job a little bit easier. Yo, it's day two. So I'm actually here in the garage just waiting for somebody to come pick up these stock US uh, GTS seats. They're super mint, but I had to let them go. So somebody's buying these. And yeah, yesterday night I was getting sick with my fabrication skills, aka just massaging the hell out of this sheet of aluminum, but pretty happy with this uh, shield. So today's agenda, I have a few specific tasks that I wanna to tackle today. And that includes working on this front bumper again to kind of finish it up. So as you guys know, I have this JDM Koki or late model front bumper. And the thing with the late model JDM front bumpers is they don't come with a lip, so uh, I think it looks a little bit plain. I think it could deserve a lip. And a common thing that people do for those uh, Koki bumpers is they actually install the Zenki JDM lip. And I picked one up. Of course, I had to get a paint match and then smoothed out so it matches everything. And because that lip doesn't fit natively to the Koki model bumper, I'm gonna have to get kind of creative with the way I mount it. So to make that lip work, I picked up an assortment of fasteners and L brackets. So that's what I'm gonna work on first. And by the way, while I'm out here, I was thinking about talking about this Tesla in a future video. And more importantly, I wanna give you guys eventually a backstory to this G-Wagon that I have. I'm sure you guys have seen this thing parked in the driveway for the longest time, but there's definitely a lot of uh, plans and such for this thing. So let me know if you guys wanna know more about this. All right, I'm cleaning the backside of this lip for absolutely no damn reason because obviously we'll never see it, but I got time to kill. So this is how things are looking. It got pretty intricate. There's a lot of pieces to this. Everything's stainless. And I also slotted the holes on this side of the L bracket to give it some up and down adjustability. And then this inner top hole up here will be the mounting point to the bumper itself. And I rounded this out to fit an M6 bolt. I have the lip loosely mocked up to the bumper itself and it's just held on with this 3M masking tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and get underneath and start drilling the holes to the L brackets. So this is about as far as I can get with the lip install. The middle section with all the L brackets fits great. Uh, it's really sturdy. But here on the side, the problem with these Zenki lips on a Koki bumper is that the Zenki lip is too short for the bumper itself. So it doesn't reach the end all the way. So you can see it's about half an inch off in length and I'm not liking it too much. So I think I might just stop here. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect up this connecting pipe on the Trust DD exhaust. And it has a dual pipe three bolt flange and I already have the matching gasket for it. 
and you also know that the fastener game has to be on point. So I'm gonna be using these M8 stainless steel fasteners with washers and split washers. And for the other side of the fastener, I specifically went out and picked out this copper M8 flange nut. I'm getting ready to install the new Link ECU. So this thing actually sits inside the stock housing. So I have to take out the housing and then uh, remove the stock ECU in its place. The new Link ECU is now installed and in the housing. Uh, the vacuum line that goes to it, I ran it across the front and then to the vacuum block that way. So basically all the vacuum lines are now done. So I got a buddy of mine named John who I've known for many years. And uh, I basically only talk to him when I need something. So this time I needed a bracket made for my Ola catch can. So I hit up John, I'm like, hey, uh, make me this bracket. And then this is what he came up with. So from my end, I was able to gather up all the measurements and send that to him where he translated into a diagram and then eventually produced this handmade uh, aluminum bracket, which looks really nice. Good job, John. Thanks a lot. Shout out to you. Uh, if you're watching this, yeah, thanks man. But you're probably not watching this because you're a hater. So my oil cash can is gonna go in this area and the bracket should fit between these two holes. And then the bottom holes will obviously mount the cash can itself. Like that. So after making my fuel lines already with a stainless steel braided hose and the classic blue and red hose ends, I decided to basically dump them and redo the lines entirely because I ended up deciding that the red and blue and silver colors of the fuel lines kind of dated the engine bay a bit. It was a little bit too loud. And I think some of you actually suggested the same. So I decided to make the effort now to redo them. And this time I went with uh, Red Horse Performance's black Teflon hoses with their clear anodized hose ends, which looks really nice and super shiny. I think these new fuel lines look great. The colors mix really well and I think it'll really enhance and just, you know, coalesce with the colors in the engine bay much better. Here's a look at the new lines installed. The new black and silver color scheme looks killer. And also here's a look at the new oil catch can. All installed with a new bracket. The new lines are plumbed. But yeah, kudos to you, John, for making me this bracket. Fit great. Excellent work, you fat mother. I've been looking for the OEM door visors for the longest time. And they're really hard to find in good condition because they're just like polished metal. So usually they're all dented up or super scratched. But I think hopefully inside this box is a very clean set of these door visors. And actually a uh, NorCal A86 member by the name of Jacob, he moved to Japan for a few months uh, for school. So I actually had him try to find me the set and he did. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what it's like. And here they are. They're definitely pretty clean. The stickers are a little bit worn, but everything else is pretty much intact. No huge dents or scratches. I think these are the cleanest set that I've seen in a while. You can see how they're just basically sheets of metal and that's why they're so hard to find in good condition because they're so frail. Big thanks to Jacob. Thanks for getting me these. I see a bright feature ahead of you as an exporter. So to install these visors, you just basically slip them in. And that's it. I am stoked. 
I think these polished visors match well now with my polished brake calipers in the front and also the hatch bar in the rear.